Moments of Truth with Andrew Marks, co-founder of Success Hacker. Today I have with me Chad Jasmine, VP of Customer Success at Whitronics. Chad, thanks for making time for me today. Tell us a bit more about your company and what you're responsible for in your role. Andrew, thank you for first inviting me into this. I'm super excited today to share part of my conversation with you. Here at Whitronics, we are a technology company that provides solutions to railroads. We help them identify and improve their safety, reliability, and efficiencies across their network. My role here at Whitronics is as a vice president of customer success is to ensure a, su a successful onboarding and throughout their journey here with Whitronics, uh, optimizing uh, the solutions that we sell. Chad, I'd love to get your perspective on the importance of investing in training your customer success team and how you go about driving compliance and adoption as part of their performance management review process. Yes, absolutely. I'm super excited to talk about this. This is one of the topics that I don't believe we spend enough time on. You know, I've, I've looked at this uh, from a pyramid approach and, uh, and I, I focus on our people, team members, then we get to our customers, then we focus on process and then technology is kind of how I think about this. This year, I actually doubled down on our training. I actually took a lot of, uh, of our training budget and put it right into uh, tools like Success Hackers uh, really focused on growth. Uh, we went with the SaaS-based platform that allow our customer success managers to, over time, uh, get continued value from the solution. It also allowed them to go back to other courses to re-educate themselves on things that they might be experiencing or interacting with their particular customers or clients at that time. Uh, how, how have we instilled it? It's uh, part of our our part of our review process. Uh, on ongoing development is a key factor in that. And part of that was implementing a training program that was focused on growing their domain skills as what is a, a successful customer success manager look like? Uh, what tools and tips and tricks should they be doing? That, those are things that uh, we do uh, reviews twice a year. So we look at semi-annually. I have uh, installed in my team a certification number one is supposed to be done within the first six months of when we deployed uh, success hackers. And uh, the next uh, six months, they have level two to complete that. Uh, that has been something transformational. We actually just literally today, I got off a call with the, with the team. We have two new CSMs to our, to our team. We got off there and the one was sharing uh, his experience with the, with the platform and how he actually just had, a, had an experience or an event with the customer on how to escalation management. It was a, actually able to go back to the module and retake a little bit of it to figure out how he was going to handle that with that particular uh, customer and relate and communicate back and then, and then what support he was going to need for myself and, and other folks to allow him to be successful. So education is super critical. I'll say that we've done this now for about eight months now, nine months now, and I've seen a massive change in, in growth within my particular team by doubling down on training, uh, not doing training we would not be nearly as far as where we are today. I am very happy to report that our customer success managers are self-sufficient. They're able to create their own success plans. They're able to talk and communicate about business reviews. They're able to talk more about listening skills, of all about escalation management, dealing with a, with a problematic customer. Those are very key skills that you just don't learn off the streets and having some approaches and tips and tricks that you can rely back to are always great examples to learn from. So just, just, I want to put it out there for everybody who's watching or listening. This was not staged. This is not a, <laughs> this is not, yeah. this is not a sales pitch. Okay. Chad came to me with this topic and, and I, and I had absolutely nothing to do with his talk track. Uh, but it's always good to hear that people are getting value out of what, uh, out of, uh, out of the training. And, and it, regardless, whether it's our, our, our the success hacker, success coaching or success training, um, just educating your team and getting them prepared to deal with your customers is a relatively minor investment compared to the, the sizes of the customers that you're dealing with. Yeah. It, you know, kind of Andrew with that, you know, be, before I invested in this, this was one of the partnerships that, that I had looked out and reached out to you guys. I actually took the 12 week course where you take that crash course and you get adopted very quickly. I, I saw that after the learning and the, the level of educational level of details of the tracks that this was the right thing to, to invest in. And it was something that my team could actually grow into and learn. It kind of gets back to us as customer success managers. We want our customers to use our products. We want them to use our features. But if we don't provide the right training and the right tools to enable them to be successful, 
that's when we're talking about low adoption plays and, and risk management and churn and all that stuff. You got to invest the same thing with your people. If you're not investing the right domain skills and the right practical skills and what is really, truly does customer success mean? Because I've, I've interviewed quite a few people that say that they've been in customer success manager roles when, when they pretty much have been an inside salesperson. They have been a customer service person. They're waiting for the phone call to, to, to ring. My team is completely the opposite. My team is proactively engaging all the time with their particular customers, ensuring that we're delivering value along the way. We don't even focus on churn. I don't even have a metrics that focuses on churn. I focus on where's the customer's user experience level. They focus on where they're at in their onboarding stage. We focus on where they're at within the journey. And we're watching those metrics versus focusing on the things that are negative drivers. So that if we do a really good job on onboarding, we do a really good job on journey mapping with them by implementing success plans, which your guys' tools cover, you don't have to talk about churn. You don't have to talk about risk management. You just take those equations out and you focus on the positive. And if you're focusing on the positive, you're spending time and energy on those things, I've seen so far a success. Truly proactive success. Focused on the, the inputs, right? Yes. Focused on the stuff that's it's at, the, at the top of the funnel. And, and not the trailing indicator of, of churn is what really will drive that positive customer outcome. Now, you, you mentioned you used the word adoption. So do you feel, given, given your experience, that uh, because you've made training part of the review process, part of the performance management process, you've set that expectation with your team that you come on board within the first six months, you need to achieve that level one certification made very clear, laid out for the team. This is what you need to do and you're being measured on it. Do you feel that that played a, a role in driving, driving that consumption of the content and the adoption? A hundred percent. I have mapped out time within their schedules. Uh, we enable them to, to take the schedule. We, we don't force them to do it on the weekends or at night. We actually provide the time to get them done during the week, during your regular work hours, because training's critical. The stronger CSM that I have, the better customer retention I'm going to have in the long run, the, the least escalations I'm going to have. And that's, that's what I've seen. So, so we, we have taken the approach where we want them to take that training. We want them to review that content while they're here at the office. We want them to consume it so that they know it. I can tell you that before implementing this program last year, our time to bring up a CSM was much longer, was a much slower process. I, I right now have a CSM that has been here just a little bit over 90 days and has pretty much the core competence that, that we need him to have to, to deliver on domain experts of what are the CSM. Remember, a CSM is not only educating and working with your external customers, they're working with your internal customers. And if you're not talking the same approach, if you're not talking about outcomes, if you're not continuing to re-engage re your product team on, on those, those different languages, we're focusing on value, we're not focusing on is, is a product out there. By focusing on the training part, we've actually seen the, cost, the, the company from a, from a customer centricity grow massively because we're talking about desired outcomes. Well, they're only talking about desired outcomes because the customer success team keeps talking about desired outcomes, keeps changing the conversation. They start the meetings with, what are the objectives for this meeting to be successful? We continue to focus on those things and we have seen that shift in our, in our organization, which has been massive. And it's great to see that because we're, we're all focusing on the right thing. So when we talk about customer centricity, that by investing in the CSM's training, they've been actually spreading more and more of that wording and more and more of that culture and more of that language. And it's, and it's filtering deeper down into our culture, into our roots. And then we're focusing a lot more on talking about customers. How would the customer feel about that? What is the outcome that they're looking to drive there? We're asking much deeper questions than the superficial ones. I absolutely love it. Love hearing that. Great, uh, great thoughts on driving adoption. Definitely. Uh, we, we've, Always appreciated you as a, as a customer of ours, and it's great to hear how well your team has adopted and the kind of transformation that it helps support in your organization and with your customers. Once again, uh, very much appreciate you spending time with us today, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll get you back on the program sometime soon. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate you guys inviting me on.